HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. Coming up on this edition of HCAM News, we'll tell you about the Hopkinton Middle School Video Club. Hopkinton resident Maria Flannery joined us in the HCAM studios to talk about how the Donate Life New England organization helps save her life. We have the latest Hiller Sports update. Ashland Legion kicked off their season, and Hiller's girls varsity basketball coach Mike Greco will tell you about a great summer girls basketball camp right here in Hopkinton for 3rd through 9th graders. But first, Center School showed off their patriotic spirit and celebrated our country with their annual Flag Day ceremony. and what it means. So one particular class completed some research, we like to call it research at this level, with our non-fiction information, and the students wrote what they knew about the American flag. And I'm sure you'll guess which class this is as I read this. So students shared what they know about the flag. They wrote, I know that the flag used to look different. I know that, the, that flag day is very important. I know that the flag has 13 stripes and 50 stars. I know that a group of men asked Betsy Ross to sew the flag. I know we celebrate Flag Day so we can celebrate our country and our freedom. So that is something that we cherish and in light of our world today, we just value with such great appreciation. So I thank you for joining us today, parents, grandparents, school committee members, siblings, Thank you for sharing this celebration with us. We know that the American flag is recognized across the world as a symbol of freedom. For our veterans, it's also a symbol of home, a safe haven, motivation to carry on. So let us enjoy the delight of these young voices as they sing and recite some patriotic pieces to us.
You can view the entire Flag Day ceremony as well as view many pictures from the festivities on our website, hcam.tv. The Hopkinton Middle School Video Club had their last meeting of the school year. Throughout the year, the club produced newscasts that aired throughout the school. Students had the opportunity to run cameras, anchor at the news desk, run teleprompter, use the green screen and operate lighting, and much more. HCAM News caught up with students in the club as well as club instructor HCAM's Courtney Taylor. Give us some advice in the question of the day. You'll get a new Fun Fact Friday. And you'll find out who the winner is for our last Have You Seen This. This year, the Hopkinton Middle School Video Club was once again a success, and the students enjoyed it very much. I'll start recording. You can go whenever you're ready. Hi, I'm Victoria Allen, and welcome to HMS. No, this is not HMS. I absolutely enjoyed your video club. It was awesome. What did you like most about it? Um, I like just going around the school, just filming people and all the bloopers. All right, and in the middle over here, did you uh, enjoy the video club? And what did you like most about I it? I love video club. Um, I joined halfway, but we got to, they immediately like took me in. And then I like Fun Fact Friday probably the most, which is one of our segments, like filming that. All right, and what about over here on the right? Uh, I enjoyed video club. I studied after Manolian there invited me, and uh, it was really fun. And I enjoyed interviewing people for question of the day. Um, this has been my first year at the video club at HMS. All right. Uh, what are some of the things you've been doing? Um, we've been making different videos that like we show every Friday morning, and we do different like interviews of the teachers, and even like questions that we just go around the school and quest like ask people <laughs> do you enjoy it uh yes i think this is the best club you ever see yeah <laughs> uh how long have you been doing the uh, video club here at the middle school i'm pretty sure since december excellent Are you enjoying it yeah do you have a favorite thing you like doing in the video club i like being the anchor um well i went around the school and my friends um doing like Fun Fact Friday, the question of the day, those kind of things, they were kind of fun. And basically we recorded, We ha um, there's more to it than just like recording. You have to actually like get something perfect or like, yeah, it's, it's just a fun thing to do. All right, now what encouraged you to get involved with the club? Well, um, really it was just that um, one of my friends told me about it and I thought maybe, maybe I'd check it out. And I came to it, and I really liked it, but then every other uh, Wednesday, I couldn't come because I had something else. I always had, like, a practice or some, like, other club, like, community or something, or some mandatory, like, practice. So I couldn't come here. This year's club was ran by HCAM's Courtney Taylor, who had a lot of fun in her first year as the instructor. Mainly what the kids do is they do the anchoring, they go out and film segments for the club, so they'll do Question of the Day, Fun Fact Friday, and they also sometimes did club interviews, or I should say interviews with other clubs in the school. And oftentimes they'd also go out and find pictures for the Have You Seen This segment. All right, uh, what do you think their, the overall favorite thing was to do for the kids? Oh, definitely the Question of the Day, if I had to choose overall, not just for the people filming, but for the ones who wanted to be in it. Every time someone went out with the camera, I'd hear, oh, are you doing the question of the day? What's the question of the day? So it was definitely a favorite and throughout the whole school. All right, and if a student wants to get involved in the uh, video club, maybe for next year, uh, how do they go about doing so? Really, they can just show up. That's how a lot of the people joined in the club later in the school year. Just show up and say you want to be in it. So did any of the kids decide to take up television as a career path? Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. Possibly. It could be a job option. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Um, maybe. Maybe like a news person or something. The students may not know their career field just yet, but they seemed to certainly enjoy making television. I thought it was a lot of fun. The kids were all great. They really, you know, stepped up. They knew what they're doing and they handled things really well. The Video Club students did a great job all year long keeping Hopkinton Middle School informed. 
There is a lot more ahead on HCAM News, including the latest Hiller Sports update and how Ashland Legion Baseball fared in their first week. Courtney will get you up to date with the latest programming coming up on the HCAM channels. And right after the break, Hiller's girls varsity basketball coach Mike Recco recently stopped by to talk about the Hiller's girls basketball camp. You're watching HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. You're tuned in to HCAM News. Tom Nappy here with Hiller's Varsity Girls basketball coach, Mike Greco. Mike, how are you doing today? Doing very well. Thank you very much for having me. And I understand the uh, basketball camp is once again happening this summer. Talk about uh, this year's camp. Sure. We are once again uh, holding our summer camp in July. It's the third week. It's going to be July 18th to 22nd. Uh, we're going to run the camp from uh, for five hours, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. each day. You know, and it's, it's for girls um, that want to learn basketball, that want to improve their games, all skill levels, you know, currently in grades three through eight. You know, we've got a lot of room left. Um, camp's about half full right now, and, and we're really looking forward to getting started. Now, what are some of the drills that you work on in this camp? We work on all aspects of the game. You know, we spend time, um, you know, getting them stretched out and, and ready to play so they don't injure themselves. We then work on ball handling and passing drills that, you know, are kind of age and skill level appropriate. We kind of differentiate the camp that way a little bit, you know, so the older kids get to work on some of the more advanced stuff. Um, you know, and then there's, there's, every day has a different theme. You know, we work on shooting and offensive moves for a day. We work on defensive stuff for a day. We work on uh, boxing out and rebounding, different ways to use screens, how to play one-on-one -on -one or three-on-three, -three, building all the way up to five-on-five, -five, playing full court. Um, all the while really stressing the fundamentals and, and you know, as well as having fun and, and learning the game in a competitive atmosphere. You know, we, we get kids that are, you know, there for the first time that have never played the game before, all the way up to kids that, you know, might be trying out for the varsity team the following season. And this camp's been running for many years now. How have the kids enjoyed it so far? Camp's been around uh, all the way back from the legendary uh, Coach Dick Bliss, so it's been over, over 35 years now. Um, and it's certainly evolved over the years, but, you know, f feedback has always been very, very positive. Um, last year was my first year heading up the girls camp, you know, and I think we had really, really positive reviews and girls looked like they had a fantastic time. Can you take us through a day at the camp, time-wise? Sure. Um, so the girls will, will check in about, uh, you know, 8 or 8.15, they have a few minutes to warm up and shoot around before we start to take attendance. Um, you know, they'll, they'll meet with a coach and a counselor. Uh, one of the nice things about our camp is that, you know, the Parks and Rec Department is, is so generous with um, the amount of staff that they let us hire, we have about a four to one camper to coach ratio. Um, and so from there, you know, they'll, they'll check in, we'll take attendance, we'll get them stretched out with some of the counselors, we'll work on some fundamentals, ball handling, uh, passing, shooting um, type stuff. We'll usually do a short mini lecture. You might be on shooting or defense or rebounding, one of those skills I talked about earlier. And then by now it's about uh, 9.30 or so and we start you know, getting into some of our competitions. We have a uh, dribble tag competition. We have a Coca-Cola shootout competition. Um, we have a free throw shooting competition, one-on-one uh, -on -one and three-on-three. -three. And so that, you know, we play different types of games to you know, let the kids work on their skills in a kind of competitive environment. Um, and then after we've done that for a little bit, usually somewhere around uh, 10, 30, 11 a.m., we start our first morning game. So the kids are playing, you know, full court, four on four or five on five, depending on numbers. Um, and then we'll break for lunch, you know, and then the kids have about a half hour break or so for lunch. You know, they all seem to eat in about five minutes and get right back in the gym, which is great. Um, after lunch, you know, we'll do another sort of mini, you know, 10, 15 minute, you know, lecture slash demonstration on another skill, work on that at their home baskets a little bit, and then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll finish the afternoon with one more game before sending them home. And this camp, 
it must uh, significantly increase the, the game of these players. It must help them out quite a bit. Yeah, you know, we, we always say, you know, going to summer camp is great um, because we can, you know, really work with them in, in small group settings. You know, they get to work with a lot of the varsity players, the varsity coaching staff, um, you know, and, and come see us again in the winter. But, you know, they get a lot of that individual attention. But more importantly, they learn how to improve their game on their own as well so that they can take some of these drills and take some of these activities home, um, work on it in their driveway, work on it with a parent or, you know, call a couple of friends over to play two on two or three on three and, and really practice this stuff. But it, it certainly helps build the program. All right. Well, that's the Hillers Summer Girls Basketball Camp and the dates are? Dates are July 18th to 22nd from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. All you got to do to sign up is visit the Parks and Rec website or you can visit the Hopkinton Girls Basketball website through the high school. Uh, and there's a link right there and, and additional information about the camp as well. All right, well, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you very much for having me. I had a great time. You can view the interview again or find all the information about the Hillers Girls Basketball Camp on our website, hcam.tv. As we showed you last week on HCAM News, Hillers Softball played back-to-back -back home playoff games to begin the postseason and won them both. To earn a trip to the semifinals in Taunton, the Hillers battled King Phillip in what was a great duel between two very good pitchers. Hillers softball won their first two playoff games at home to earn a trip to the semifinals against seventh-seeded King Phillip. King Phillip got the offense started in the top of the second inning. Bases loaded, no outs led to this. Bradley deals. And this is hit in the air, and that is going to go off the glove of Lily Morningstar and drop down for a hit. One run in a score. Bradley deals. This is up the middle, glove by Whalen. Tags one, throw to first. And they are going to call her safe at first. Another run does come around. And this is on the ground, up the middle, glove by Whalen. Throw to first, and they get one. That is going to be another run for King Phillip. Besides an additional King Phillip run in the top of the seventh, that would be it for the offense and complete the Hiller season as they fell to King Phillip four to nothing. Callie McGain pitched the complete game and got the shutout over the Hillers. King Phillip then went on to beat undefeated Silver Lake in the finals and advanced to the Division I Final Four in the state. Congratulations to King Phillip and congratulations to Hillers head coach Kylie Murray on a great first season as coach and the Hillers players for some amazing memories. Another team that created some great memories this season under a first year head coach was the Hillers girls tennis team. They went all the way to the championship of the South Division II bracket, but fell to Foxborough 3-2. Congratulations to the Hillers girls tennis team and first year head coach Christine Lyons, who helped lead the Hillers to an undefeated season in TVL play. Ashland Legion Baseball held their home opener at Ashland High School on Tuesday, June 14th against Newton. Top of the first, two outs, two on for Newton, Mike Butera at the plate. Time delivering from the stretch, runners both taking a small lead. Up the middle, right to the second baseman, throw to second for one, throw to first is not going to be in time. Another runner trying to come home, he'll score. One to nothing, Newton. Alex Haslam taking advantage of the situation, comes all the way from second base to score. 2-0 Newton trying to add another in the top of the fourth. Two outs, two on for Alex Haslam. Time deals, runner taking off from first, and this is hit into right field. That'll drop in front of Sharma. Another Newton run around to score. The throw to third to try to get the lead runner it was just bobbled by Bates. Ashland threatened against a relief pitcher in the seventh, but Newton held on for the 4-1 victory Ashland fell to 0-2 on the season with the loss. Ashland post-77 would lose the back end of a home and home with Newton the next night, 12-8 to fall to 0-3 overall. 
Congratulations to Hiller's girls softball and girls tennis on amazing seasons and terrific playoff runs. After being the recipient of two organ transplants, Hopkinton resident Maria Flannery has been working with the Donate Life New England organization to spread the word of how organ donation saves lives. Recently, Donate Life New England coordinator Jennifer Cray and Maria Flannery talked to me about the organization in the HCAM studios. Um, I was on the list. Um, waiting at the same time for a deceased donor and I had decided that I, instead of just the kidney I was going to list for a kidney and a pancreas. The pancreas if I received it would cure my type 1 diabetes and the kidney would get me off dialysis and save my life. So um, I waited and I got my first call. Uh, this kind of will describe how difficult it is to find a donor too. Hopkinton resident Maria Flannery talked about her long-lived struggle waiting to receive needed organ transplants to live. It took four calls and many months of waiting to find a match for Maria that would successfully bring her back to good health. So my fourth call came um, September 22nd of 2012. I had gone down to the um, Born Scallop Festival with a friend. Uh, I was not feeling good at all. She was very concerned about me going. My blood pressure was 220 over 110. Um, and that's taking a lot of medication. And um, I just wanted to be out. It was a beautiful day. I wanted my daughter to be with, my friend's daughter was going and I wanted her to enjoy the day. And we went down and um, my cell phone buzzed and I answered it. it was Mass General saying, come on up, we've got another potential donor for you. So we drove up and I waited from, um, it was about four o'clock in the afternoon on the 22nd until um, about five o'clock the next evening on the 23rd. So it was almost about 24 hours waiting to hear if it would be a go or not. And um, I was told it would be, which was amazing. And um, <clears throat> a very un unique experience because I think a lot of people would think that you'd just be so excited. But at the same time, I, I think more, what pulled on me more was knowing that a family was going through such tragedy. Um, so it's not this big celebration you're having, It's it's, you know, you're seeing the bitter sweetness of it. Right. Um, so within an hour, they just did everything so quickly, had me hooked up to what I needed to be hooked up to, final x-rays and everything, to have taking antibiotics and immunosuppression pills and rushed into surgery. And I came out 11 hours later with a new pancreas and a new kidney, and everything was working beautifully. So um, off dialysis that day, I uh, have not been back on. I'm very healthy now, and um, and diabetes free, which was just the icing on the cake, just truly incredible. I had diabetes for 39 years, taking four shots a day, and um, six finger sticks a day, and I haven't done any of that since the transplant, so I eat whatever I want. I don't have to count my carbs. I have missed, I calculated at one point, so far I've missed about 5,000 insulin injections and about 7,000 finger sticks. Maria is just one of the many examples of how the Donate Life organization has helped save someone's life. So right now, we're looking at about 123,000 people in our country need an organ transplant to survive. And that's people of all ages. I mean, we know babies, mm -hmm. children, teens, um, uh, uh, seniors and everything in between who need who, a transplant to survive. So of that 123,000 people waiting for hearts, lungs, livers, kidneys, pancreas, um, and sometimes small bowel, uh, 100,000 alone are waiting for kidneys. Uh, so you mentioned that when you renew your driver's license, you can register to be an organ donor. Mm -hmm. Do you by any chance know the percentage of people that currently are registered to be organ donors? Sure, sure. Um, right now across the country and as well as here in New England, just over 50% of our adult population is registered. So that's really wonderful. Um, we have a great partnership with the Registry of Motor Vehicles. Um, if you go into an RMV office, you'll actually see Donate Life, our information there in the office. Um, and the clerks know, the RMV staff know that they have a key role in, in this. By having that question on the form, 
and verbally asking people when they come up to the window to turn in their paper, their forms, when they're renewing their driver's license, for example, the clerk will now ask you, and would you like to register to be a donor today? And that one question makes such a difference because you know, you're giving the people the opportunity to say yes, if they'd like to, if this is right for them, um, and they could maybe someday save someone's life. You can hear more about the Donate Life organization on a special edition of HCAM News Focus airing soon on HCAM. For more on that and everything else coming up on the HCAM channels, we send it to Courtney Taylor with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, June 18th at 1 p.m., it's softball versus Walpole. And at 3 p.m., it's softball versus King Philip High School. On Monday, June 20th at 7 p.m., Cosi Sheridan performs her original folk songs on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. And there are ways the world is broken, but I can say for certain, most people are good, most everywhere. On Tuesday, June 21st at 6.45 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, June 22nd at 11.30 a.m., Center School students celebrate our country with patriotic songs and poetry on a new HCAM News Focus. And on HCAM Ed, a peasant girl wins the heart of a prince in the HMS Drama Club production of Cinderella. And the musical performances continue with the Hopkins School Spring Concert, the 6th Grade Spring Concert, and the 7th Grade Spring Concert. Just because summer is almost here, that doesn't mean that HCAM will be taking a break. If you want to know what we're up to, just visit HCAM tv slash connect to sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. And if you want to know what will be happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, hcam.tv, you can view the entire broadcast of the Center School Flag Day ceremony and read more about the new Hopkinton High School Athletic Director. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and thank you for watching HCAM. HCAM is supported by our viewers and by Blackstone Valley Wealth Management, providing highly personalized financial planning, wealth management, and customized solutions through transparent, unbiased advice. Visit us at blackstonevalleywealth.com.